Good morning, students, and welcome to another cast of Age of Empires. Today I am playing the Mongols, which is a three-star difficulty Civ. And I'm playing against two hard AIs that are both on the same team. In the southwest corner, we have me playing the Mongols. In the eastern corner, we have uh, Zhu Xi's legacy. In the northern corner, we have, I believe, uh, what is this? Oh, Byzantines. We have the Byzantines up here with their, their cisterns and their aqueducts. So last time I was playing the Order of the Dragon, which is one of the easiest factions. I would say Mongols are probably one of the most difficult factions to play. They are a three-star difficulty Civ, but I also find them to be one of the most interesting. As you can see here, their, their buildings are able to pack up and move anywhere. And the theme of the Mongol nation is nomadic. They're a nomadic people. So they don't use any houses. You're not going to see any houses here on the Mongol side. There's a population cap of 200 from the beginning of the game. So you can just churn out as many units as you want while the other civs are forced to make houses. There are a lot of downsides to playing the Mongols. Probably the most glaring uh, weakness is that they are completely unable to build any form of walls. So you can't build a palisade wall, you can't build a stone wall. But they do have um, the ability to use stone. So here I'm building a stable and it's still the Dark Age. So you'll see they, they level up much faster than I do. But I stay in the Dark Age for a little bit longer uh, because I'm, I'm spending my resources on a stable and I'm just churning out two early horsemen at a time using the stone. So as I mentioned earlier, the Mongols can use stone for their upgrades, um, but they cannot directly harvest stone. You can't use vi villages to harvest, harvest stone. So you, you use the special building called an Uvu, which means that your stone generation is kind of fixed throughout the game. There's no way to increase it or decrease it. It stays fixed at 70 stone per minute until you go up in age and then that will increase. So let's just see what's happening in the game here. Got a few... Uh, horsemen out on the field. I'll bet that the other players don't have any army at all, but they have already leveled up to the feudal age. Um, what is this? Grand Winery. Zhuang Tower. So I'm going to be going for deer stones. Um, oh, and I'm sending a little troop here to attack. So let's just slow down time. So I'm, I'm doing a little bit of a raid here, taking out one of their villages and running away because I'm being fired at. Got my Khan leading the, the attack. The Khan is the Mongol leader, which is a unit that's unique to the Mongol uh, faction. And he has a bunch of spells over here, or um, signal arrow, arrows as it's called. So when you use these, he'll send an arrow into the air and it'll explode. And that arrow signals to everybody in his vicinity to either speed up, uh, increase their attack speed for arrows. I actually didn't know that. I thought it was a general attack speed. Defense, which is a castle age thing, and, or scouting, which, which is something that all the scouts of the Mongol faction have. It's a scouting falcon, which will scout an area without you having to put any units in it for 30 seconds. So there you go. I'm ready to level up to the feudal age now. I'm way behind the other guys technologically, but I'm carrying out raids and killing their uh, villagers. Here you can see I killed another villager. So I've killed one villager from each faction. So these guys are working on a team against me, two hard AIs, and they're both ahead of me techno technologically. 
but I have the uh, military advantage. <coughs> Excuse me. So this stable is just churning out uh, units the entire time, and this town center is just churning out those villages, which is something that uh, you should always be doing, by the way, if you're an Age of Empires beginner, never stop producing villages, until you have about a hundred, I would say. Or, you know, if, if, you're, if it's going well, then you don't really need to keep producing, like if you're winning, but a hundred is a good uh, stopping point. Uh, this is the Deerstones monument, which is going to take me up to the feudal age. And what this monument does is it simply increases the movement speed of everybody in this radius here. And I'm using that to increase the movement speed of the villagers. Unfortunately, these ones over here aren't going to be getting the buff. I should have actually moved it a little bit over, but I was, I was too focused on... Um, just getting ahead of the enemy um, but what this does is it just gives an eco boost here so all of these villages are going to be working faster and that's just going to make your resources come in a lot faster so here i'm building an archery range because i've attacked with horsemen the enemy is going to want to counter that so so you're going to see a lot of spearmen from both the byzantines and uh, Zhushi over here and the spearmen uh, left to their own devices. If you if you don't uh, if you don't actually run away from them with your horses, these guys are going to absolutely destroy me. Uh, so that's something that you need to learn. So so my uh, strategy is to get them to churn out some spearmen, and then I go onto archers. I have the option of going with Mangadai. But I, I instead just go for the regular archer because they are significantly cheaper by a factor of about three almost. And and these take gold. Um, and the Mangadai are extremely squishy troops. And in my experience, although they can fire while they're moving, they, they do very little damage. And I always end up forgetting to move them and then they, they just get attacked and they die. So I've, I've stopped using Mangadai and I instead just go for the regular Archer just because they're so much cheaper and they, they do more damage if I'm not mistaken. Um, that, that don't, don't uh, quote me on that. So here I'm carrying out another little raid here. They, they're trying to build a wall, very ineffectively I would say. Um, that wall doesn't connect on either side. I think the, the AI might be bugged. Uh, I've noticed they also build walls at the back of their base sometimes, which is um, completely unnecessary. But yeah, they could have done a much better job with this wall. They could have made it a palisade wall, would have done a much better job, because they're just going to be losing a hell of a lot of villages here. And I think I, I, think I lose a horseman. No, I don't lose anything. So I'm, I'm doing very, very well right now. I haven't lost any units, I, I believe. Let me see. I think I've lost one unit so far, uh, probably from the Byzantines, I didn't notice. Um, but yeah, my, my archers were standing over here and they were just firing at uh, the attackers while they were trying to chase the horsemen. So m when it comes to uh, an, an, uh, armies here, my army is about 10 times larger than both of their armies put together. I don't think the Byzantines even have one. Which is something the Mongols uh, are really good at. Or at least this is how you should be playing the Mongols, in my opinion. Uh, so here I'm building a bunch of pastures. These are the uh, farms for the Mongols. They don't, they don't have the ability to build uh, regular farms, so they build pastures instead. And this fits in with the nomadic theme because sheep can be moved and what's very clever about this game design is that the uvu buffs all of these buildings it gives the ability to make two times units the it gives the ability to give extra upgrades i actually missed this upgrade uh, it makes the pastures produce sheep faster um, and that means that once it's depleted and you have to build a new one, 
Um, you can only have one at a time, by the way. So you, when you build a new one, this one gets destroyed. So I'm do, uh, carrying out a little raid here. Uh, it gets destroyed and then none of these buildings are going to be left anymore. So then you have to go move all of those buildings to the new location around the stone. And that's why they say that stone is the backbone of the Mongol civilization because you, you're going to have to base your entire base around the Uvu if you want to effectively use the Mongols. And it's all about, about tempo here. Oh, and also resources because you, you're getting twice the amount of troops for half the amount of resources excluding the stone that you use. And because there's there's no walls, there's no keeps. You can't use stone to upgrade your tower to, uh, tower defenses. You can use stone to make weapons, though. And there's a whole lot of things that stone is not used for in the Mongol Empire, and that incentivizes you to use it uh, for your troops. And that that's what makes the Mongols uh, such an aggressive faction. So here I'm going to destroy their buildings just using my troops and their torches because once this building catches a light I get money from that which is a unique Mongol technology they they get uh, gold and I think it's food or wood some some resources from making buildings catch on fire so here they, they try and attack with some uh, spearmen I did manage to run away but I was a bit late making the archers attack but now they're attacking and I'm just cleaning up some of their um, I don't know what these are. Oh, palace guards from the from the Jushi. And yeah, that that force was dealt with very effectively. I think I only lost two units there. And they just proceed with destroying this building, which is gonna get some money. So here yeah, I'm ready to uh, age up into castle age, and I decide to put my castle age upgrade right in the middle of the map here because what this does is it it gives you a healing boost for all the units that are in its influence but it also gives you a damage boost when your leader the khan is within the range of the building so when your khan is in the range of the building all of the units in the range get an attack boost but that isn't really as important to me as the healing is because a lot of my units are um, wounded and they're about to die so once this is up all of those are going to get healed and it's like I'm going to get brand new units there. Um, the, the, the extra damage I think it's like a 25% damage increase uh, that's great but if your, if your Khan dies which happens often because the enemy will target your Khan that, that bonus no longer applies, in which case it's, it's useless. So um, the healing, I've heard Beastie say that this landmark is not the one you should go for and you should instead go for the Gur, which increases your um, gold income. And that's fine, I suppose. I think he's, he's playing on a much higher level than me. I mean, I'm playing two hard AIs and they're, they're not putting up much of a fight. He plays against humans who um, are just as good as he is and they're, they're putting up such a fight that the extra gold means a lot more to him than it means to me. I'm already winning so that, that extra gold isn't going to do anything so I prefer to have this this healing uh, aura. I also like it because it's sort of it's sort of like an extra outpost that you can use as a keep. You just need units in there and those units are going to uh, fight for a, a lot longer because they um, have that extra regen So he's uh, finished with the walls and as you can see here the unnecessary walls at the back of the base uh, Please Age of Empires developers Fix this this <laughs> He's this is a hard AI. I mean, I don't know if the hardest AI does this but I'm not gonna be able to get him from this angle so these walls are just wasted time and resources here. Yeah. And this, <laughs> this faction also did it. So instead of building troops, they built a bunch of walls. Um, it, it's, it shows I should probably be playing human players, but anyway. Um, soon, soon. I'm still learning. I, I gave a bunch of reasons in the last cast 
explaining why I don't play multiplayer and I forgot to mention it. I'm still learning as well. I don't want to be playing humans without really knowing what I'm doing in the game. So I like learning while I'm playing the AI. Um, so I, I forgot to show you. Ah, oh, man. Got to show you, but I've moved all my buildings from the base here to the new Uvu that I've built in the center. And that happened really quickly. It happened so quickly that I, 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 I didn't even show you. So all the sheep that were there, they all followed. And this is, uh, this exemplifies the nomadic nature of the Mongols. So my gold guys are finished there. They're going to be moving their uh, operation to the, the center of the map. The town center is going to be moving as well. Oh, there you go. I age up to the castle age. And they're sending their pitiful troops against me here, and it's just, uh, it's not really working out. So, I can beat two hard AIs with most sieves on this map, but when it comes to an open map, that's a different story, because open maps have more uh, avenues and angles for the enemy to attack you from, so I, I can't hold my own against two hard AIs on a team in an open arena, but in this glade match it's much easier because of these choke points. Uh, these choke points just make it so that you have less to think about and uh, yeah, it just makes the AI easier to beat. I think the AI is just not optimized to play on uh, these kinds of maps that are designed to have choke points. They're, they're much better on open maps uh, where these walls would actually make sense. Uh, there you go, I have set another building on fire there, earning myself an extra uh, little pocket of gold. Um, town center is still at the back here, let's speed up time. But uh, they keep attacking. So my objective now is to just build some siege. These uh, infantry are building some siege on the field, which is a blacksmith upgrade. Uh, the, the Mongols have a unique ability to build trebuchets on the field with their infantry and uh, their units as well as uh, mangonels and uh, the the other one I forget what it's called um, Uh, the springled, the springled. So they can build springolds, mangonels, and trebuchets on the field, which is something that other factions can't do. Uh, I believe there is another faction that can build springolds and mangonels, but not trebuchets. So they are the only faction that can build trebuchets on the field. But their trebuchets are slightly weaker than um, than other factions' trebuchets. So it's, it kind of balances out there. But now I'm just laying siege to the front of their base and uh, their position is hopeless, unfortunately. Because you can't build walls with the Mongols, you have to resort to building lots of towers. But I think, I think they might have a unique tower um, ability to fire without any... Oh no, no, okay, I'm mistaken. Their towers are just normal towers. Right. Another thing uh, that I, I'm doing at this stage in the game is making some religious units to capture the sacred sites and to capture some of the relics. I just noticed their, their religious units are called shamans. I didn't know the Mongols had shamans. That's quite cool. So here's another little force coming out to attack my army. Just got to make sure that these spearmen don't have access to any of my cavalry and the archers can just deal with them. You can also send villagers to repair your uh, damaged siege engines.
So in the, the previous cast, I, I also built a base in the center of the map, but I, I walled it off. And also there was a, a base in here, but now you can see this base is completely gone. I've moved the town center to the middle to provide an extra defense because of the, uh, the arrows that it can fire. And uh, the, the Mongols also save a lot of wood. So the whole way through the game, I'm, I'm selling probably about 90% of the wood that I chopped down with these, this huge uh, lumber force over here. The reason I have such a big lumber force with the Mongols is because it's, it's pretty much the only one that you don't have to move around the map. You have to move your food around the map, you have to move everything else. Lumber can sort of stay in one place. So I have a lot of people cutting wood, and then all of that wood I sell. Pretty much all of it, because you don't, you don't have to use wood to make buildings, because you instead of rebuilding buildings, you just move them across the map. So in that way you save a lot of wood. Like, the gurs can be moved, uh, every building can be moved. So when I'm playing the Mongols, I always find I have a lot of excess wood. And you, you also don't have to dedicate any villages to collecting stone. So uh, in that way, you also gain excess resources. So this, this match is pretty much won here. Uh, I, I just go capture the, the other sacred site. Speed up time. I'm just plonked two armies, one in front of each base, and I'm just oh, okay. That's a that's a quite a big force here, but they don't have they don't have any chance because I've got this mangonel, I've got the springle at the back, and all these archers. Uh, yeah, they're, they're just kind of unstoppable. So that was, I think, their last attempt at taking me out. So there you go, I've captured this uh, sacred site at the back. Sent in some soldiers to defend my shaman there. And I'm leveling up to the Imperial Age with the White Stupa, which is an Uvu. Just like this Uvu here, but you don't need to build it on a stone outcropping. It just somehow produces stone from the ground. And then it provides all the same influence as a regular Uvu. So you can see some of my buildings packing up here and redeploying. So I moved them all from this location here to this location. Still the same buildings that were, that were here at the beginning of the game. It's, it's why I love this faction so much. Um, it is a lot more hands-on and that you have to micro each building to, to move to the place and set up and a lot of microing in the, middle, in, the, in the beginning of the game with your military units to go take out theirs. But everything about this faction encourages you to, to raid in the early game and to move around the map as, as much as possible. I find with playing the Mongols is that the, 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 the part that you're most vulnerable is, is right around when your first Uvu runs out of stone. Because that's the point where you need to move. And if you don't successfully move your Uvu to a new stone location, you're probably going to lose the game. So it's important to scout out a new stone location and secure it with towers and military units before this Uvu runs out of stone. Before your first Uvu runs out of stone. Um, because once you've secured that, that second Uvu and you've got all your pastures and your uh, military buildings around it, I, I feel like you've won the game at that point. You, because. The, the bonuses to the, the military production with the stone and the upgrades that you can get, they, they just give you the edge. Um, but if you don't do it, then you've lost the game. So I think the, the Mongol success completely hinges on whether you can set up that, that second Uvu.
Right, so now I have both sacred sites and I'm sending in uh, more siege equipment to both sides. Speed up time. They actually took out quite a few of my units there just because they were standing their ground and I didn't notice. That was quite a cool animation. So I, I didn't want to win via the sacred sites, I wanted to win by uh, domination. So that means destroying their um, monuments. And I almost succeeded this time, but I didn't notice this one at the back here. Which to me doesn't make sense because I, I thought that only their beginning town center was the landmark. But I don't know, maybe I'm missing something here because I definitely did destroy all of their landmarks this time. So at some point I throw caution to the wind and I just start sending all of my military units directly into the center of their base because I, I realized at this point that there was no possible way that they could come back. So I just kept pressing a uh, comma which selects uh, idle military units and I just kept pressing A and then clicking on the center of their base with every single unit that I had at my disposal. And all of my military buildings just produce units send it right to the middle of the, their base and uh, just let the uh, let the units automatically just deal with all of their buildings and I'm just destroying landmarks left and right So it looks like now that they don't have any landmarks, I should win the game. No landmarks here. No landmarks, okay, they've got one left here. That, that won't be standing much longer though. Oh, here. Ah, oh, okay, I didn't see this one here. The cistern of the first hall. They didn't even connect the aqueducts together. So the Byzantines connect their cisterns together and then this number here goes up to 5. And that provides boosts to all the buildings and uh, units in the vicinity. Depending on what bonus you choose. There's a number of uh, bonuses to choose from here. Research, uh, defense, military production. Oh, health regeneration. That's a new one. I didn't. I didn't know that they had that one. Yeah. So that's that's pretty much the end of the game. Uh, just gonna speed up time here. I was so confused at this point. I was like, where are the the landmarks? And I started sending my units to other parts of the map to find them. Um, but it was all too late, unfortunately. Still won the game, just didn't win it in the way that I wanted to win it. I think once you get to the Imperial Age, all of the civs pretty much play in, in the same way. The only real difference is the, the unique units for each faction. But the, the Mongols play very, very differently at the beginning of the game from the other factions. If you recall, in the last cast I did with Order of the Dragon, it was literally just building a base and then sending out your armies to attack. In this one, it was way more complicated. There's a lot more to think about with early military production, uh, you know, not going for the feudal upgrades straight away in the beginning. Uh, oh, look at the water leaking out here. Um, 
yeah, but that's the end of the game. Can I can I look at some stats here? Is there a way to look at some stats? Timeline. Oh yeah, no, that that game was not contested at all. I think next time I should do three AIs against the Mongols for myself. Yeah, but thank you very much for watching. Uh, subscribe, hit the notification bell if you want to see more action. I'm working on a lot of videos, um, so yeah, stay tuned for that. Bye!